How's it going everybody? My name is Jesse, welcome back to the channel, and this is video 11 in my bungalow renovation series. Today we're back to the bathroom, rebuilding the shower wall surround using a fiber cement backer board, and then going over that with subway tile and that same black grout from the kitchen. So you're gonna to get to watch that process go together. And then uh, we shift over and add a toilet. And when I started to do that, I ran into a pretty interesting problem. The door wouldn't shut. So I have to relocate the toilet flange, shove it back a couple inches, and I'm gonna walk through that process with you as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we've got the go board in. This is a fiber glass rigid board product. It's very easy to work with. It can be cut with an X-Acto knife and then scored and snapped. And then polyurethane sealant. It's a big thick uh, tube of caulking. And then you smear it all over the joints uh, where the boards meet and where it meets the drywall. And then over every screw head, it's screwed in with backer board screws. And then I've set the first row of subway tile. And so I ran a level line from the highest point, which is about right here. Level all the way across, all the way across here. It took me a couple tries because this valve interferes with my forefoot level, so I had to do it with a... With with uh, Brooks pink level. And so I've got those all set. It's very important to get those level because the rest of the tiles will rest on them so that that can start happening in the next few days. So I've run into a fun new problem uh, while putting the bathroom together. If you recall, there was a tiny, goofy little toilet in here before, uh, short, kind of small. And uh, now I kind of figured out why. I've set this test fit toilet with a round bowl, not even an elongated bowl, uh, over the flange that was there. And, oh no. So I've got to make some adjustments and I'll show you what that's going to look like. Ideally, I would have done this before I installed the new flooring, but I did not measure. So this is the flange that the toilet plums down into, and uh, it's, it's on what's called an offset. So a standard offset in a modern home is 12 inches. In older homes, I understand it was 14 inches, and that's what it is here. So from the back finished wall to the middle of the toilet flange, should be 12 inches, but it's 14. So that means a modern toilet is going to sit about two inches off of that back wall and two inches too far out for the door to close. So I've drawn a new line where I'm going to need to cut back the existing floor and then move this back a couple inches. There's a couple ways to do it. Uh, one is using 
a, an offset flange. I don't love that idea because uh, offset flanges can cause clogs. They, they kind of have a really sharp bend right at the top. So I'm going to go to the underside and take a look at what we've got and how we can maybe move that flange. Now we're looking up at the underside of that toilet flange. So this is the bend and it goes into a three inch PVC pipe, which goes into a flex fitting. And this flex fitting connects to the cast iron stack. So it's a three by four inch flex fitting, which means there's going to be a little bit of play in this section of the pipe because I can push it further into that flex fitting. So I'm going to be able to push this, those couple inches there, bed it deeper into the flex fitting. I may have to cut part of the PVC off, but it looks like we're going to have the clearance to move it. And now I just have to cut the floor back to make room. All right, we cut the floor back. You can kind of see where I use my angle grinder to cut away the vinyl tiles. And then I switched blades and cut back some of the actual tiles that were underneath that. And then I got my sawzall and cut out some of the wood on the subfloor. And then as we saw underneath, uh, I just pushed the PVC into that flex fitting a little farther. But it is moved back. And uh, I've also attached this. This is a two-part flange um, so that these bolts can bolt the toilet down. I'm going to screw this into the floor in these holes there and uh, the toilet will sit right over these and then secure down to them and that's how you move a toilet back. Now let's get the toilet in here and test fit it make sure the door will hold. All right test fit on the toilet now that it's been moved back and hooray well, that wraps up for today. Very excited with how the bathroom is coming together. I still, I love the, the subway tile look. I know it's not for everybody, but I love the black growl and the white tile. Just, it looks really fresh in my opinion. And then that toilet situation was a little dicey. I got kind of nervous. Uh, this is not even an elongated bowl toilet. I had to go shove all the way back and we got about that much clearance, but it all worked out. So thanks for tuning in on this one. Unfortunately, due to a time crunch, I had some tenants ready to move in. They actually uh, started stacking their stuff in the house because the renovation, as they always do, ran a bit long, but they were gracious. Uh, but I didn't get a lot more as far as renovation footage. So the next video in this series is going to be a finished walkthrough. You're going to see how everything ended up with even some decorations in the house for Christmas. And it's it's really, I'm very proud of the final product. I hope you are looking forward to seeing that. So. If you really want to see the final product, and I know you do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you know when the video gets posted. Uh, give us a like. It, it, again, it helps the YouTube algorithm pick up the videos and, and blast them out to everybody so more people can see this process and learn from it. And then leave a comment below. Let me know what you liked, what you disliked, what you'd like to hear more about. And thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one.